RTX 3090 and a 20 core 13 gen 13980HX versus the M2 Max, does it even have a chance? Well, today we'll find out because not only are we going to be running some benchmarks like you've seen, but we're gonna run real world performance tests, including photo editing, video editing, 3D rendering, regular workflows, and much more. And we will find out if the M2 Max gets smoked. This is the MSI Titan GT77HX, and it is an absolute beast of a machine. You guys see how big it is. Look at that huge back end sticking out of it that is full of heat sinks and fins in there to cool this thing down. This thing has four fans with eight heat pipes compared to the Mac, which has two fans and two small ones. It has a 330 watt power adapter that is not only way larger than Apple's 140, but also thicker as well. Now, as you guys see, I had to stack the MacBook on top of another MacBook just to get the displays to match up for you guys because this thing is fairly thick. Now, uh, MSI advertises it as fairly thin for such a beast, it's about one inch, but because of the layout and the shape, it is thick and it weighs pretty much double what the MacBook 16 inch weighs. Now inside, we do have a 99.9 .9 watt hour battery, just like the M2 16 inch MacBook Pro, but of course this thing sucks power at that performance. So not only are we gonna test it plugged in with this beefy cable, but I'm gonna run a few tests unplugged to see do we still get massive performance drops when we unplug, like with the previous generation Intel and Nvidia chips, or can it maintain that better and how does it compare? Here are the full specs side by side. We have a 5.6 gigahertz, 20 core i9 processor, 64 gigabytes of ultra fast RAM. The RTX 4090 has its own 16 gigs of RAM and yes, this MSI costs $4,700 compared to $3,500. Now, if you take the MacBook, when you upgrade it to 64 gigs of RAM, two terabytes of SSD, we're up to 4,300, meaning it's still quite a bit less money. Now, the screen's also fairly nice. It's 144 Hertz, 4K, mini LED, 1000 nit, but you guys can see that the contrast levels don't match up because this has a matte coating over the top of it. But enough about specs, let's go ahead and jump into performance. I have Geekbench 5 open, it actually looks like we have 24 cores compared to 12 and double the RAM. Let's go ahead and run the CPU benchmark. We do have best performance enabled on the Windows laptop. Can you guys hear the fans are already spinning up? We're here, the fans are off. All right guys, we have the results and look at this. As far as single core, we are almost identical. The MSI is half a percent faster, but multi-core, it is 37% higher score. So that is definitely impressive. Now, what I'm curious about, it'll be my first time testing this. I'm gonna unplug this bad boy, set it to best performance, and let's try this one more time. Now, of course, the MacBook was unplugged the whole time. That's one thing I like about them, the performance stays the same. Let's wait for this to get done. It does seem like it's taking longer than before, and I'm not hearing the fans this time around. All right, we're getting the score. Oh my goodness gracious. The single core stayed about the same, so it's still beating out the MacBook by a little bit, but the multi-core score is at 12,656 instead of over 20,000. That's a huge drop. It was 36% faster before. Now, the MacBook is 21% faster. That is probably one of the biggest swings in performance that I have ever seen. So now we know, if you buy one of these bad boys, you best keep it plugged in. Now I wanna run the compute test. We've been skipping this lately because we have Windows, Mac OS, we have Metal, we have CUDA, but they're still doing the same exact tasks just using their respective APIs and graphics. So let's go ahead and run that. All right, wow. We have 86,000 compared to 254,800. Literally three times the performance. And we'll see how that applies 
to real world productivity tasks. Now the SSDs in this MSI are insane. They are almost twice as fast as the MacBook in terms of re-speed, and that's because they are in RAID 0. Now I wanna test the web responsiveness. I'm gonna run speedometer 2.0 here, and this just checks the performance of web browsing, and a lot of applications are now web-based, so it shows the performance. And this is somewhat surprising, because you guys saw the single core score here is faster. The multi-core is way faster, we're plugged in, but the MacBook still won by 18% which is pretty interesting. Now this is still a very fast score, but wow, and we're on battery. Now one such web application is Figma for design. And this project right here is brought to us by 500 Designs, one of the best design agencies in LA. And I'm zooming in here on the MacBook. Everything's insanely smooth, loads up really quickly. I'll zoom in right here. You guys see pixelated, bam, second later. It's all done. Let's try out the same thing on this machine. As you guys can see right there, that took about three seconds or so to load up, just like my Mac Pro, which also has an Intel processor. And that's very weird because this has way more performance. Let's try that again in another spot. Once again, multiple seconds to load up. We're on the same internet. Uh, everything's exactly the same. So I wonder if it's got to do with Apple's unified memory, which just can communicate faster. And I have these 12 high resolution web pages selected, and we're gonna go ahead and export these. All right, both are finished. The MacBook took a minute, 35 seconds, very fast, but the MSI took a minute and 31 seconds, beating it out by four seconds. So it's a mixed bag. When we're rendering, it is slightly faster, but as far as responsiveness and design, you guys saw the difference. Now in this next test, I think the Mac is gonna get destroyed. We're gonna max out the CPUs, we're gonna look at the temperatures, we're gonna look at how much power these systems require and what performance we get. Uh, but first, let me tell you guys about Moft's brand new foldable five-in-one sit-and-stand laptop desk the Moft Z. Not only is it super thin and with really good build quality, but it is the only stand that offers both a sit and stand posture in a one piece design. And you guys see how quick it is to set this up and we can use this 16 inch MacBook Pro and I can stand up, bam, I'm all good to use it. And then we could drop it down and set it up in a 25, 35, 45, or even a 60 degree angle for iPads. So go ahead and check out the Moft Z using the link in the video description below. And now let's go ahead and get started with our Cinebench test. Now, right away, I am seeing 100, 200 watts on the CPU. My goodness, I mean, it's at 190 now, 170, it's scaled down. The Mac hit about 36 or so at peak. It's running at 34 and a half right now. It hit 96 degrees Celsius right away. Our Mac is still at 87 with the fans off. So this thing definitely gets hot very fast. We're running at 3.7, 3.8 gigahertz compared to 3.2 on the Mac. And now it's throttled down to 2.7, 2.8 gigahertz. And then the fans kicked up loud. Uh, to try to get that performance back up. It's very interesting. They actually did try to keep the fans being quiet. Listen to this. It's about to take off and it's back to 140 watts right there, 145, wow. I have never seen this in a laptop. Now to be fair, the Mac is at 101 degrees Celsius, but the fans are literally, I don't know, 20% up. Apple doesn't care if it runs hot. They want it to be quiet and it is silent at this fan speed. Let's break out the thermal cam and it looks like we have about 40, 41 degrees over here. That's not too bad. Definitely not too bad. And on the Mac, 42, slightly higher. So this beast is doing a great job cooling down 130, 140 watts sustained, uh, but it's just very loud. Oh my goodness, guys, you know what? I'm not gonna show this, let's let the MacBook catch up. All right, it is done. It got 13,500 like we've seen before. And I did the math on the points per watt. The MacBook got 400 score per watt that it used and on it's on battery. And the MSI got 205 points per watt. 
but because it used so much more power, it got a score of 27,573. I can't even say that, that is insane. It is literally twice the performance with four times more power usage, but it's still a laptop. That is insanity. Now, since I'm curious, I'm gonna unplug it. I wanna see what we get on battery power. I'm gonna clear out my minimal and maximums. Let's go ahead and do just a single test since I know it's not gonna throttle. And dang, this time we only used 50.99. That is 51 watts, basically a quarter of the power that we did before, still more than the Mac. It's running at about 45 watts now and only at about 2.1 gigahertz. And yes, high performance mode is on. And here we go, look at that, 15,788. This shows the new capability of the 13th gen. Now it did drop in performance by a lot, close to double, but it used only slightly more power than the MacBook did. It stayed silent and it outperformed it. That is impressive. And also show where the graphics, I'm gonna start out with 3D Marks, Wildlife Extreme Unlimited. This RTX 4090 is a beast. So let's go ahead and run this test. All right, we have our results here. Our MacBook got 150.7 but the MSI got 260 frames per second. That's way higher, but if we do the math, that is 72% more frames per second, which is a big difference compared to Geekbench where it literally tripled the MacBook. Now, uh, this is a gaming benchmark. It's well optimized for both systems, so it shows you when it's optimized, the difference isn't as big. Now, I also ran it unplugged, and there it dropped to 64, being less than half of what the MacBook got. So you literally get a quarter of the performance on battery. And I was honestly hoping for better with this new uh, RTX 4000 series. Uh, and that was going into the settings and turning off all the battery saving features that are there. So the moral of the story is make sure this thing is plugged in no matter what, not only when you're rendering, if you're using graphics performance, it's gonna be very weak if you're not plugged in. And now let's look at 3D rendering where the MSI using OptiX, meaning it's gonna use the ray tracing cores to do this, is gonna be insanely fast. We're gonna go ahead and render this. We're using Metal with the Mac. And the Mac did get a lot faster with these latest updates, but let's see what we get. Wow, okay. <laughs> this thing did it so fast, I don't even know if it peaked the graphics. It used 131 watts, 5.4 seconds compared to 30 watts peak, 21.8 seconds. Now we gotta do something harder, so I opened up Party Tug here, let it load up. Somehow the Mac loaded it faster, even though I started it after. Okay, both these are done, and let's hit render. Wow guys, this is mind-blowingly fast. If you need a laptop and you do 3D rendering, oh my goodness. We have a minute and four seconds compared to 13.6 seconds. That is more than four times faster rendering performance. Apple, you really need to get ray tracing in these. And now let's get into photo editing using Lightroom, which uses both the CPU and the GPU. I'm gonna go in here and it says it supports limited performance. So let's go to custom and we're gonna enable to use full performance. The first thing I'm gonna try is some of their AI tools. So let's select sky detection. The Mac, surprisingly faster there. Uh, it was almost instant, less than a second. Here, about two seconds or so. And that might be just because of the neural engine that's built into here. Let's try the subject detection here. The Mac, slightly faster there. This one wasn't that far behind. The next I'm gonna do is compile a panorama. So I'm gonna import these photos. We have 10 50 megapixel images here. The M2 Max took 42 seconds. And of course, this thing has a crazy fast SSD, which will help. So let's run it. The fans are kicking up here and bam, 36 seconds for this thing. That is 16% faster. I was expecting more because we are plugged in the CPU smoked it, doubled the performance. The graphics is way more powerful too. It's very interesting. Now for the render, I had to do something tougher. So here I have 499 photos instead of just 50 that I normally do. I'm dropping at the same time. Mac loaded up a little quicker. It also got the previews faster as well. I'm gonna apply a preset to all of these so the graphics has something to do. 
Now, I'm not doing the adaptive one because then the neural engine is gonna edge out uh, the PC here. All right, wow, the Mac is going fast. I honestly was not expecting that because this thing has better performance in every way, twice the SSD. Okay, that's crazy, this is done. This thing's a turbo fan about to take off. The fans are off here. I guess that's unified architecture, I don't know. But now, I'm gonna go ahead and set this up to export all 499 of these images. I'll let it cool down a little bit here, and then we will export. All right, wow guys, here we're using 85% of our CPU, 45% of the graphics, and the Max is using all of the graphics, and as far as CPU, performance cores are almost maxed out, efficiency cores are kind of chilling there halfway. Wow, 96, 100% of the CPU. And we look like we're neck and neck here with this race. No, 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 I spoke too soon. This thing's kicking up the fan, speeding up. We're using 12 gigs of RAM on the graphics card here. Bam, it is done, and we have to wait for the Mac. I'm not sure why this thing's slowing down. The performance cores are half. The graphics is half, but winning is winning, and the Windows PC took two minutes and 53 seconds compared to three minutes and 58. And now let's test out video editing. Now I have DaVinci Resolve 18 open up right here, which is very well optimized for both. And the first thing I'm gonna look at is the performance of denoising raw video, which is super tough on these laptops. It's gonna show the raw performance of these systems. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play, and wow! Our MacBook is playing back at about 13 frames per second, which is good for a laptop, but I have never seen a laptop play back at a perfect 24 FPS, meaning we can actually go into our timeline here and play it back in real time with no glitches or stuttering with a bunch of denoising enabled. My $15,000 Mac Pro can't do this. That has a $2,800 Vega professional graphics card in it. But this laptop is legitimately a desktop replacement. As long as you can plug it in, of course, but where else can you get this? Now the graphics card is almost maxed out here, so you can't get more performance than this. That is insane. And now I have a standard 4K graded project here. This is H.265, which is what 95% of people are shooting. Neither of these have any issues playing this back. And I wanna see how much graphics card usage we have. And that is very interesting. We have 26, 27% on the NVIDIA, and then only about 10 to 14% on the MacBook. Meaning the MacBook actually has more overhead for extra effects, titles, animations, but that's very odd. And now I'm gonna render this five minute test project using H.265, we're using NVIDIA's encoders, and I really wanna see, did they make a good improvement with the 4000 series? Let's click render. Now the NVIDIA is fast, about 125 frames per second, but the MacBook's at 165. And with that, it's only using 56% of the graphics compared to 100% here. So yes, NVIDIA did get faster, but no, it is not enough. The MacBook just smoked it. It is so fast and so good for video editing. Now these numbers here are just hilarious. You can't complain about this. 59 seconds compared to 45 for a five minute project. That is insanely fast. Of course, we're plugged in over here. Just as a curiosity, let's re-render that. I wanna see how much it slows down. And that took a minute and 52. So not twice as long, but close, and about the performance of an M1 MacBook Air, at least for this kind of work. Now, of course, you guys saw denoising, it was massively better. And because of that, I have to give it something harder to do, something where the fans are spinning up. So this is 6K Blackmagic raw footage that needs to be debayered, it's scaled, we have a color grade on here, and let's render this. Well, it's definitely much harder. We're running at 70 FPS on the Windows laptop at 100% graphics usage, 40% CPU, and on the Mac, we're also maxing out the graphics using even more of the CPU, but we're getting 135 frames per second. It is blowing through this footage. 55 seconds on the MacBook, I was not expecting this because the Windows laptop took a minute 44 seconds, almost twice as long in this tougher test than before. Before, it was very close. I just did not expect that at all. And we are plugged in compared to on battery power. 
So turns out, if you do video editing, unless you're denoising with heavy footage, with heavy denoising, the Mac does a killer job. Plus you have the ProRes encoders and decoders so that you can work with ProRes Pro footage and it's even faster than this. So you guys let me know your thoughts. Obviously for gaming, it blew it away. 3D rendering destroyed the MacBook, but for photo editing, for video editing, for web tasks, uh, just in general, a cheaper system, 3,500 bucks compared to 4,700, worse specs, worse standard benchmarks, uh, but real world was doing a killer job. Now, personally, I'm excited to see MSI's other laptops. This thing is huge. I wanna see their Creator Z16P. That's a great comparison uh, with price, with size. I wanna see how that compares, maybe some other alternatives. So if you guys wanna see those, make sure you guys click subscribe because we are gonna get more in and we'll run some other tests for you guys and see how a laptop that's similar size will compare. Click one of those videos right over there and I'll see you in the next one.